This video will show how a fabricator might use the status transfer information feature in SDS2 and so the first thing I'm going to start off doing is uh, opening up the model that I have here behind the fabricator screen and uh, in this instance if I'm the fabricator I'm getting the model from the detailer and I want to see what information what members have been approved or re ready to be fabricated so which members I can start with so I'll use my status display first to search for those members. Looking at my fabricated fabrication status released and you can give yourself a span and we'll say 816 to 820 2011. So that gives us kind of a window of when some members have been released for fabrication. We can see all the beams in the job, job have been released for fabrication. I can see which members have been released for fabrication and then I want to maybe pick or maybe I have a fabrication sequence I want to use and I'm just going to select a few members that we will set to be marked as fabricated. So I'll change their status just by updating it here and we'll say fabrication was completed today for those few members selected by area. So those members have been updated. If I want to view the color coding in my status display I can come up back up here. I'll add a new priority and raise that to the top. Change the color to magenta. And instead of release for fabrication I will say it has been completed. There we go. So the ones that are released still remain blue. The ones that have been uh, fabricated now have changed to pink. Now I want to transfer that information. If I say I'm giving a daily update to the back to the detailer so they can track that model or maybe the project coordinator to see so they can track that BIM model, I can send an XML file out from SDS2. Status only. And the only information that I want to transfer out, I'm writing a file, name it petting house and I only want to transfer out certain information. The only information we're going to release is the fabrication completed. That's the only update that we've really made. So we're writing that file and then select the members and that's created a file for me. Now I'll exit my fabricating station and acting as the detailer I'm going to open up my version of the job. We will go ahead and just to show you that it doesn't have that information already in it, I'll search for members that have been fabricated complete fabrication completed. So you can see nothing's been marked with uh, completed for fabrication. If I change that from completed to released for fabrication and set my dates. you can see that it does have the information that these pieces have been released. So that's the last piece of information I sent to the fabricator was with those beams that have been released for fabrication. When a fabricator wants to update me with the change in status then he can send me that XML file that we just created in the fabricator station and that will update my model. So I'll just read that ma material information in by opening the macro and this time instead of re writing I'll read and I'll go to the desktop and find my XML file that was created and I can read in all of these items or I can read in just one thing I can go ahead and hit all of them if it doesn't exist it just won't update anything it shows me all the members that have been updated and so now if I update my status of display again to do a new priority, raise that, make it magenta, and change that to completed, and apply it, you can see that information is transferred over where it wasn't there before. So that's what the status transfer uh, where its power really lies is that you can communicate using the model, color coding it to track the project's progress, whether it's steel through the shop or if it's information about shipping steel on site or having it being erected or approval process, any of those things. Anything we can track in SDS2 can be color coded here in the model.